This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this itsy bitsy teeny weeny very thin and light iPhone is the 2022 edition of the iPhone SE, which is the third generation. Available in three colors. I think it's called Starlight, which is a white, you know, these marketing names for colors. You have Midnight, which is a very dark blue, looks almost black, and then the product red version. So the claim to fame for the for the SE, besides the fact it's very small for those of you who like very small phones, is it's incredibly low price. It's $429, like iPhones for $429. Wow, that's pretty cool. So Apple has updated it. The last time they did that was 2020. So here we are two years later. And mostly they've done good things with it. Certainly there's value here. And we're going to find out what I mean by that now. So for updates with a design that's largely the same, we have a big one inside and that's upgrade to an Apple A15 processor. That's the same processor that you're going to get if you buy one of the big boy iPhones, the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro Max, right? So that's nice for the price. It benchmarks almost as well, but not as well. It's close enough and certainly for the price, so that's fine. I don't think particularly that Apple necessarily hobbled it due to pricing. I think it's probably more a factor of lack of cooling room in this tiny phone. It's a lot smaller certainly than the bigger iPhone 13 models out there. And performance is nice because it's not just, you know, with Apple, you know, you're going to get OS updates for years for iPhones that won't go out of date or be a security danger because of that. But now you've got a processor that's just as good as the more expensive phone. So you feel like if you don't want to upgrade often, if spending money is not your favorite thing in the world on a phone, that you've got a lot of longevity in this phone, certainly. The display on this is 4.7 inches and it's an IPS LCD, no OLED here. And as you can see, it's claim to fame is this incredibly retro design, which is the touch ID button on the front and a big forehead and chin area. So if I was to say, who is this phone for? Number one, it's for people who don't want to spend much money and want a brand new iPhone. It's also for people who want a small iPhone. You don't have huge hands or a huge budget perhaps. So the iPhone mini might be out too, because that one's $699. And then there's those who actually just really are still in the old school camp. You prefer touch ID for whatever reason to face ID. Me personally, I like face ID. It's a whole lot faster. I don't have to have a hand available. And now even with the OS updates, you can have it working with a mask should we have to go back to masking again. But I know there are people who still just like touch ID and like the way their old iPhone worked. That's what you're going to get here. Speaking of the iPhone 13 mini at 699, interestingly enough, that's a smaller phone for those of you who like small phones, but it has a significantly larger display at 5.4 inches and it's an OLED model with face ID. So if you're wondering what you're getting by spending more for the mini model versus this, uh, those are the big changes. Plus the design looks more like the rest of the iPhone 13 models versus the SE, which is distinctly again, retro. The retro design to me, because it's so thin and I have really long fingers and big hands, means it's kind of hard to hold onto and it's glass on the back. It's very pretty, but it's also very slippery. I feel like I need a case with this phone more than any other. It's small, it won't add much bulk, so whatever. In terms of cameras, you get one camera on the back, one camera on the front. So no multi shooters, no wide plus ultra wide, like you would see on the mini model or triple cameras on the even more expensive iPhone models. And these are a bit lower resolution, including the front camera, a little bit lower resolution too, though it's not bad. That front camera is seven megapixel. It does 1080p video. And the back camera is a main wide. It's pretty wide. You can see some distortion in some of the sample photos from the wideness of the lens, but it's not ultra wide. But anyway, it's 12 megapixel with an F1.8 lens on it. And it's not bad at all for the price point. I mean, Apple's uh, computational photography is certainly excellent. And you get things like HDR, you get the portrait modes, you get the new scene settings that Apple's offering. So it's, it's for the price. Again, it's pretty good. It's not going to win the photography contest, maybe the way an iPhone 13 Pro Max might or something like that, but it's good enough. I think it'll make most people happy. And the photos look good on the screen too. This might only be an IPS LCD and you can see the resolution and the specs on screen, but it's a pretty nice looking one. It's still a P3 wide color gamut, 625 nits, which is pretty darn bright. 
it looks pleasing enough. You have True Tone on board if you prefer that. I actually do like True Tone, so things don't look too glaringly cold white in the evening, that sort of thing. So it's a pleasant enough looking display. It's not OLED, it's not, ooh, it's vibrant. But then again, you're also talking about a 4.7 inch screen. You're probably not going to spend hours watching Netflix on this sort of device because it's a small screen. I think the phone is more for folks who just need a pocketable general use phone and not something to replace a tablet or something like that. You can game on it. The performance is obviously up to it. Again, you've got, you got dealing with a small screen here. So especially for touch shooters and games like that, you're going to be blocking a lot of the screen with your thumbs when you're playing games. So, uh, But if you're playing something more casual, like Candy Crush or something like that, it's certainly fine. Again, the performance is there for any game, but the size of the screen will be the limiting factor for that sort of thing. As part of the modernization process, we now have 5G. It's sub-6. You don't get millimeter wave here, but that's okay because just about no place has millimeter wave anyway, and it would tank your battery life. It's that super fast gigabit 5G. And the speakers are the same as last gen, which means stereo, one in the earpiece, the other on the bottom and right edge where the little drilled holes are. And surprisingly, it's a loud little phone. Not a huge amount of bass, but pretty loud for something this small. We have the usual lightning port. We do not have a headphone jack and got dual band Wi-Fi on board, Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5 and FC. So you can do your Apple Pay kind of thing. There's no wireless charging on board. It supports 20 watt wired charging, which is sort of fast, but there is no charger in the box because Apple, right? No more. Yeah. So how about battery life? Apple claims to have improved it a bit. They claim 10 hours of streaming video playback time, 50 hours of playing music, which is kind of like who plays music for 50 hours. What's with these weird metrics? I found that it lasted me easily enough throughout the day. If you're a super heavy user, if you're going to be GPSing all the time, obviously you might need to top it up, that sort of thing. But the battery life is certainly adequate here. One thing I will note, because this phone is so thin and has such a powerful processor, if you're doing things like playing games or shooting a lot of 4K video outdoors, you will notice it getting warm on the back. It's more noticeable than certainly with the bigger iPhones. Not burning hot, not alarming hot, but you'll feel it because it's darn tiny. So that's the iPhone SE third generation for 2022. Again, it's a very affordable phone. I think that's the idea. The target audience here is those who don't want to spend too much on a phone, who maybe prefer smaller phones as well. That's for you. If you're buying it for your kids and you don't want to give them the thousand dollar model, understandably, you know, that's what it's here for. It's not going to replace the iPhone 13 mini, obviously for higher end features like Touch ID and an OLED display and dual cameras on the back. But then again, it sure is a lot less expensive. In fact, it's even less expensive than the last generation mini. The iPhone 12 mini is still selling for like $629, not much off on that. So this is $200 cheaper. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.